With the discovery of the quantal release, one important question that we need to uncover before we discuss what the quanta are is what exactly triggers the release of these quanta. The intuition that calcium had a role to play in synaptic transmission became apparent as baiting the neuromuscular junction in a lower calcium concentration made the postsynaptic responses much lower as this experiment shows. More convincing experiments, again made by cats, that sought to determine what was the signal for chemical transmission, utilized the giant synapse of the squid. This synapse is very convenient as its size allows the insertion of electrodes into the pre- and postsynaptic structures. Two electrodes are inserted in the presynaptic cell, one for stimulation and one for voltage recording. A third electrode is inserted in the postsynaptic cell to record the voltage there. The third electrode is very important because it provides a way for the experimenter to know if the signal was transmitted or not. When an action potential is generated in the presynaptic cell, the excitatory postsynaptic potential is usually strong enough to cause an action potential in the postsynaptic cell after a small delay. The same experiment can be performed in the presence of tetrodotoxin or TTX. Remember that TTX is a toxin that blocks voltage-gated sodium channels and thus impacts the action potential of the presynaptic cell. In this setup, what the experimenters have noticed is that in successive action potentials, the amplitude of both the presynaptic action potential and the postsynaptic excitatory postsynaptic potential gradually decrease as the effects of TTX get stronger. This result entails that the size of the presynaptic depolarization influences the postsynaptic response. We know from previous discussions that the action potential is mainly governed by the influx of sodium and the subsequent efflux of potassium through voltage-gated channels. The experimenters at the time knew that aspect as well and wanted to see if sodium and potassium also had something to do with the release of transmitters. To see which ions are responsible for signal transmission, the experimenters first used TTX to block sodium channels, and by injecting current in the presynaptic cell, the experimenters still saw an EPSP in the postsynaptic cell. They thus concluded that sodium is not necessary for signal transmission. They then turned their attention to potassium and added tetraethyl ammonium to the TTX solution to block voltage-gated potassium channels. Here again, after a current is injected, transmission still occurs. The results here are a bit different as the action potentials are sustained throughout the current pulse. This is explained by the fact that the inactivation of potassium prevents the repolarization phase and thus the cell stays depolarized. Either way, it was clear that sodium and potassium are not the ions responsible for transmission. These results made the experimenters shift their attention to calcium. As I mentioned in the beginning, Katz already knew from his experiments on the neuromuscular junction that lowering the external calcium concentration decreased the size of the end plate potential up to the size of the miniature end plate potential. The team also found out that the voltage-gated calcium channels were much more abundant at the axon terminal. And as a reminder, under physiological conditions, calcium is kept at very small concentrations in the cell relative to the outside which produces a very strong driving force. The conclusive proof that calcium was the signal for transmitter release came from experiments made by Rodolfo Linus and his colleagues, which utilized the voltage clamp technique. Remember that the purpose of the voltage clamp is to lock the cell at the command voltage and send a compensatory current that maintains the command voltage. The compensatory current is a direct measure of how the cell reacts to the change in membrane potential. Linus and his team voltage clamped the presynaptic neuron and applied the same pharmacological blockers to prevent any sodium or potassium current from flowing, such that it isolates the calcium current. They also placed an electrode in the postsynaptic cell to record the voltage there. In terms of the recordings, we have three plots. We first have a plot for the command voltage, one for the current in the presynaptic cell, and finally a plot for the postsynaptic potential. All of them are as a function of time. When the presynaptic cell is clamped above threshold, the recordings show an inward calcium current in the presynaptic cell and a rising postsynaptic potential. At higher command potentials, the responses elicited in the postsynaptic cell were bigger. The results also show that voltage-gated calcium channels 
do not inactivate like voltage-gated sodium channels and stay opened as long as the depolarization persists. When a calcium channel blocker such as cadmium is introduced in the system, the presynaptic current and postsynaptic depolarization are blocked. In summary, calcium is often said to be necessary and sufficient for transmitter release. The necessity comes from the fact that if one adds calcium buffers in the presynaptic terminal that inactivate calcium, then even when the action potential depolarizes the terminal and calcium enters the terminal, the buffers will prevent calcium from causing the release of transmitters and thus preventing signal transmission. The sufficiency comes from the fact that if calcium is injected in the presynaptic cell, it can trigger the release of neurotransmitters even without the input of an action potential. Thank you for watching this video. If there was anything unclear or there was a mistake somewhere in the video, make sure to let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, you can consider leaving a like and subscribing to support the channel. On the right, you will see the informational resources that I've used to produce this video. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in our next discussion.